right where you are. Somebody give him praise. Somebody let God hear your voice tonight. We come to bless him. We come to honor him tonight. All the glory belongs to him. Come on, thank him for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. Come on, anybody thankful, anybody grateful. Hallelujah, God. We bless you, oh God. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Receive our praise, God. Receive our worship. We bless you. Hey, oh, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hey, all the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Help me say all the glory, say. All the glory belongs to you, hey. All the glory belongs to you, hey. Yes, yes. Oh, all the glory, say. All the glory belongs to you. All the glory belongs to you, oh God. Hey. All the glory say, all the glory belongs to you. Oh, yes, yes. Come on, sing to him. All the glory say. up your minds, open up your heart, and allow the spirit of the living God to come and consume your very place in your heart and your presence. As we declare, Yahweh shall be praised tonight. Well, it is worship on Wednesday tonight, and that's what we've come to do. We've come to allow the spirit of God to revivify, to edify us, to exhort us, bring us comfort as we, Lord God, give unto you, Lord God, this day and forward. We say hallelujah anyhow. We give you all the glory. We bring you all the honor for your name is great and greatly to be praised. So right where you are, join with us in spirit as we worship the Lord tonight, as we prepare our minds and our heart to receive tonight the blessing, the meal that is prepared for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to engulf us, encompass us, surround us, Lord God. Circle us, Lord God. Hover over us, Lord God. Reign within us, Lord God. Shower down, Lord God, the blessing of your presence tonight. We ask your Heavenly Father that you would consume, Lord God, your servant tonight. Lord God, as he ushers and brings us and serves, Lord, the prepared meal for us tonight. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread tonight. Thank you, Lord God, it's not a rushed meal tonight. 
Thank you, Lord God, it's a prepared meal tonight. Thank you, Lord God, it's for our living tonight, God. Have your way, Lord God, as we declare hallelujah to you, the only wise God. Me glory and honor and power and dominion. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord tonight.
shout your name. I shout your name. Let it be known. You are the King of Kings, Prince of the Prince of May your kingdom reign. Just lift your hands to 
to him. And tell him you are. satisfy the thirsty soul tonight. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is to see thy power and thy glory so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary because thy loving kindness is better than life my lips glory to God shall praise thee. Thus I will bless thee while I live. Yes, yes. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as the morrow and the fatness. My mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember upon my bed, glory to God, and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice, because thou my soul followeth hard after thee for your right hand upholds me come on family God put your hands together and let's bless the name of the Lord hallelujah 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 lead me to the rock Thank you tonight. We thank you. 
tonight. We glorify you tonight. We honor you tonight, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. What a joy it is. Thank you, Elder Craig and Praise Team. We thank God for you tonight. Hallelujah. Good to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Amen. November the 2nd, 2022, our second day of glory to God. Second day of our prayer and consecration here at the Potter's House, Dayton International Ministries. We're in our 21 days of prayer. We just came out of our 31 days of our 52 days of restoration. We're just so honored and so grateful, amen, to be in the house of God tonight. I want to thank God for all of you that are here in the house tonight and those that are watching online tonight. We pray, amen, that today has been a glorious day for you, that you've been able to enjoy the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Glory to God. We give God praise tonight for the word of God. We give God praise Hallelujah for another worship on Wednesday right here at the Potter's House Dayton International Ministries where none other than Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for our prayer, intercessory prayer tonight. We were able to pray for families. We invite you at home to continue to pray tonight throughout the course of tonight. We go through these 21 days. Amen. We're praying family tonight just believing God to do great and wonderful things and miraculous things greater things shall he do in your life I'm just happy to know tonight that God satisfies the thirsty soul yes. just for a little while tonight just want to share with you what the spirit of the Lord has placed on my heart hear what God is saying hear what God is saying. Local peripheries will be coming out of James chapter 1 verse 23 through 25 according to the New King James Version. Hear what God is saying. Hallelujah. Give an honor to Bishop, Dr. Bishop Mark C. McGuire Sr. and Lady Angela down in Jacksonville, Florida. We thank God for them tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for our bishop, uh, Lady Angela, tonight. I just want to remind you that uh, uh, Bishop will be joining us here uh, during the Thanksgiving week. Hopefully and prayerfully he'll be able to stop in with us when we do our Thanksgiving meal here on Thanksgiving Day. And so we want to invite uh, those of you that are... Uh, looking for a place to eat and come and fellowship with us join us here at the potter's house we would love to have you come and sup with us on thanksgiving day amen hallelujah glory to god we thank god for how he's watched over all of our sick and shut in and be uh, good to see elder craig back in the house tonight amen thank god for you elder craig for all of those that have been um suffering from the virus amen we thank god for the for the holy spirit his healing power amen uh, that by his stripes we are healed amen we just pray and continue to pray that those that are dealing with the 24 hour 48 hour virus amen that you'll be strengthened in the lord tonight and know that uh, the family of god is praying with you and for you we want to just continue to remind you amen that we're still uh, social distancing and doing what we can amen to keep ourselves safe we're not asking that you have to wear a mask but if you know that you're not feeling well or you're a little bit under the weather we invite you to wear a mask uh, so that we might keep each other safe and healthy amen as we continue to deal with this triple demic uh, that they got going on now and it's affecting our kids and RSV and the COVID-19 and the flu all at once. Amen. It's, it's kind of running rapid in the earth. 
and I just want to continue to pray for our young people and the parents who care for them in Jesus name amen amen those that are able to stand with us we invite you to do so now and uh, in the absence of Lady Moss we want to thank God for her tonight amen and we thank God uh, uh, for all of you tonight James chapter 1 verse 23 to 25 the word of God reads as follows. Or if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, I'm sorry, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. This one will be blessed in what he does. Can you say amen? Uh, I'm going to read one more scripture. Uh, Ephesians 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor, hear what God is saying. Hello, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wave at your neighbor tonight and let them know you're glad that they're in the house of God. To an all-wise God, we give you thanks, we give you glory, we give you honor. Tonight, we're just sharing your heart to give us a heart that is pure so that our words may be pure give us a heart that is kind so that our words may be kind give us a heart that is full of joy and encouragement so that we may share these truths with those that you bring into our path and with whom we share conversation have your way tonight speak to families tonight speak to leadership tonight speak to friends and our foes have your way we pray in Jesus name people of God said amen amen and amen Tonight, family of God, just for a little while, just for a few minutes, uh, I want to share as we continue in our series, uh, we, we, we took a break from our leadership series um, right before October the 1st because we wanted to focus our attention on the miraculous move of God in these unprecedented times. And we're still, amen, operating in that space uh, but tonight, I just uh, feel led, amen, to go back to our leadership series and just speak a little bit to families and to the leadership of the house of God. Some things that God wants to say to us uh, to help us uh, to continue to tour and to grow, be uh, the light that he's called us to be, that we might Continue to lead folk to him. And that's our purpose. That's our goal is that we operate in Christian love and Christian communication. And one of the things that the Spirit of the Lord has been revealing to me is that Christian communication is not simply for clarity. Not simply a goal that we should seek to be understood. The goal even is not just for us to be truthful, even though all of these things are significant and important in their own right. But that we might have a heart that is full of joy and encouragement 
so that we can continue to share these truths with the people that God would bring into our path, into our home, into our church, into our lives. I believe, amen, that the goal that God is looking for us to set here, not just in this house, but throughout the kingdom of God, churches around the world, is to be appropriate, to be encouraging, to be uplifting, and to be available to meet the felt needs of other people. God is not speaking uh, in generalities, if you will, but I believe God is always speaking, and the Bible lets us know through Scripture uh, that he's always working around us. He's, he's inviting us, amen, to join him at his work, and he's, 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 he's placing people in our way and in our life, and, and I believe, amen, that when God whispers from the pages of scripture. He, he speaks in a way to confront us through his word. He directly addresses issues that we as the body of Christ, as, um, as, as the body of Christ face or live. And when we keep that in mind, amen, we understand that God is calling for us to comprehend the truth. What does that mean? God wants us to learn his ways and his principles, to recognize our own frailty, and to identify the needs of others. He does more than offer us uh, head knowledge. He, he makes truth applicable to our lives let me give you an example. I believe, amen, that the Lord assured Paul in Scripture that his strength was sufficient to carry Apostle Paul through whatever he had to face. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 said it this way, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I went back and I looked at the NIV version of the text, and it read this way, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me I think I think about sometimes elder uh, there, are, there are times I wake up in the morning with headache and uh, I don't know about you but sometimes amen I like taking the extra strength pain reliever glory to God uh, uh, one reason why I take it amen because I, I, it has power to address my issue come on Holy Ghost uh, my weakness drives me to want to take a pill or pray. Now, we be not, you know, sometimes we pray. I'm, I'm going to be, let me talk about me. Sometimes I take the pill and then I pray. Come on, God. <laughs> I'm not saying that. We ought to pray first, amen. And maybe we don't have to take a pill. But sometimes, well, what we're going through, the pain we're dealing with, hallelujah, we take whatever we got to do, amen, to take care of the pain. And so I take this pill that its power may be demonstrated in my life by taking care of the headache that I had. Now one of the things the scripture shows me about this is that if not for the weaknesses that God allows us to endure, we would lack opportunities to seek his sufficient grace and experience his perfect power. Hallelujah. I'm thankful tonight, amen, that God allows us to have moments of weakness, amen, that he might show himself God in our life. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10, according to the message, because of the extravagance of those revelations, and so I wouldn't get the big head, I was given the gift of a handicap. 
to keep me in constant touch with my limitations. Uh, Satan's angel did his best to get me down. But what he did, in fact, was he pushed me, glory to God, to my knees. Come on, Holy God, I'm on. I got I to I I hang out right there just for a minute, amen. Have you ever been through some things, amen, hallelujah, you're going through some stuff, hallelujah, and, and the enemy thought he was going to use it to cause havoc in your life, to, to destroy uh, your testimony or whatever it is he thought he was going to do, but God used it, amen, to push us to our knees. No danger then of walking around high and mighty. At first, I didn't think of it as a gift, and I begged God to remove it. Three times I did that, and then he told me, my grace is enough. It's all you need. My grace is enough. It's all you need. My strength comes into his own in your weakness. Glory to God. And once I heard that family of God, I was glad, the writer said, to let it happen. I quit focusing on the handicap and began appreciating the gift. It was a case of Christ's strength moving in on my weaknesses. Now I take limitations in stride and with good cheer. These limitations that cut me down to size, abuse, ex accidents, and opposition, bad breaks, and all kind of hiccups, and you know, whatever it is you're dealing with. I just let Christ take over. And so the weaker I get, the stronger I become. Glory to God. We got any strong folk in the house tonight? Hallelujah. Because of the weaknesses, amen, that we suffer through in our lives. And I just want to encourage you tonight, family of God, that circumstances taught Paul that God's word was true. And so the second point I want to make tonight, I'm not going to keep you long, amen. I hear God saying he wants us to conform to the truth. Conform to the truth. Our lives are shaped by our belief system. What we hold as true influences our thinking. Let me say that again. What we hold as true influences our thinking. In turn, family of God, how we think affects our character, our conduct, and our conversation. And God is determined, amen, to mold us, his children, into Christ's likeness so that we may consistently reflect his gospel to the whole wide world. I'm thankful tonight. I'm, I'm glad tonight when they said, let us go down to the potter's house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, 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 and the Bible says that the potters, amen, the potter, amen, was working the wheel and had the clay in his hand. And he said, while the clay was in his hand, the clay was marred. Amen. And I just thank God tonight that God sometimes, amen. I told the elders when we were talking a couple weeks ago, I believe sometimes God takes the clay, hallelujah, and he mars it himself to keep us humble before him. Sometimes God, amen, to, to, to knock us down the side. Sometimes God, hallelujah, will shape us, amen. And one thing about it, uh, he, uh, even though he, even though the clay was marred, even though it was going, he had to work that thing over and over and over. He said he had to make it anew on several occasions, amen. But the good thing about it, hallelujah, that no matter how marred the clay was, no matter how hard he had to go up and down that thing, amen, we were still in the potter's hand, glory to God. And I just thank God tonight that no matter how your weakness is, is, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what your struggle is, hallelujah, you are still in the potter's hand. Somebody ought to give God praise for that tonight. Hallelujah. We're still in his hand. And God says conform to the truth. The truth is, saint of God, that God ain't, he, look at he's still working on us. He's still writing our story. Hallelujah. And we can rejoice in that fact. Hallelujah. God satisfies the thirsty soul. Hallelujah. And so James chapter 1, verse 23 and 35, when we look at uh, the Message Bible, 
I, I love this because it says in verse 22 through 24, don't fool yourself into thinking that you are a listener when you are anything but letting the word go in one ear and out the other. Act on what you hear. Hear what God is saying. Those who hear and don't act like those who glance in the mirror walk away and two minutes later they have no idea who they are, what they look like. But whoever catches a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God, the free life, even out of the corner of his eye and sticks with it, is not distracted, is no, is no distracted scatterbrain, but a man or woman of action. That person will find delight and affirmation in the action. So I hear God saying, family of God, hallelujah, is don't get that thing twisted, amen. Just keep on, do, thank you, man of God. Just keep on, amen. Just keep on doing what you're doing, hallelujah. If you can get a glimpse of the word, if you can get a glimpse of God, if you can get a glimpse, amen, uh, of God doing some miraculous things in your life, hallelujah, hold on to that, amen. Act on that, hallelujah. Just do whatever you got to do, hallelujah, to stay focused on the word of God. Catch a glimpse of the revealed counsel of God. Point number three tonight, as we continue to hear what God is saying, he said communicate the truth. We're going to conform to the truth, but we also want to communicate the truth. Hallelujah. One of the things that uh, we've been studying at my home, hallelujah, is learning how to be honest in our communication. Amen. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We big boys and big girls. Hallelujah. Ain't no, ain't, hey, we're not going to skip over this thing. Amen. We're going to tell it like it is. Hallelujah. And we're going to deal with it. Come on, Holy Ghost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Communicate the truth. Every child of God is called to make disciples. And the way we make disciples is we be honest with folk. We tell them what the word of God says. We tell them, amen, that this walk ain't going to be no, no cakewalk, amen. You're going to get saved, amen. You're not going to be walking through the tulips, glory to God. You're going to have some good days, and you're going to have some bad days. And sometimes you're going to have some downright terrible days. Hallelujah, glory to God. But speak the truth to people. Matthew 28 and 19, according to the NIV. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I just believe tonight, family of God, that we can know the Lord and walk in the light but still fall short of his expectation. And we must share the gospel by sharing God's truth with others and explaining how his word played out in our lives. We got to be a witness. We got to let them know, amen, sometimes I blow it. Sometimes, amen, I don't cross every, I, I don't cross every T and dot every I. Sometimes, amen, hallelujah, I let stuff slide out my mouth. Sometimes, amen, I don't go where he tell me to go. I don't do what he tell me to do. Sometimes, amen, I don't want to, come on, Holy Ghost. We've got to be honest with folk, amen. And the truth is, saint of God, hallelujah, I wish it was true that every day is Sunday. I wish it was true that every time you look at me, amen, I'm on cloud nine for Jesus Christ. I wish it was true, amen, hallelujah, that I ain't never had a bad day, but the devil is a liar, hallelujah. But I thank God, hallelujah, that even in my bad days, hallelujah, God has a way of making them good days. Hallelujah. 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 God has a way of turning our bad days into good days. Hallelujah. And what the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it for your good. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So when Jesus arose from the dead, he conquered sin and death. 
Mary Magdalene and the other Mary found their way to the empty tomb and the risen Savior. They looking for him. Jesus' resurrection proved, amen, that what he had taught was correct. He used his ultimate authority when he gave the great commission, but showed his ultimate power by promising to be with his followers forever. And that's why today, family of God, we can rejoice in the fact when he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I'll be with you to the end of the age. We thank God. Hallelujah. For the resurrected Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Mary, the two Marys knew a task. They had a task and, and, and that they knew had to be done. The Bible says Jesus' body had been prepared for burial. Peter didn't offer to do it. Andrew didn't want to go do it. Uh, the forgiving adulterers or the healed lepers, amen, was nowhere to be found. So the Bible says the two Marys decided that they were going to go, hallelujah, and prepare Jesus' body. I wonder, my friends, if halfway down to the tomb, if they had sat down and began to reconsider it, what if they looked up at each other, amen, and began to shrug their shoulders? What's the use? What if they, amen, as they went, amen, they stopped in the middle of the track, amen, and said, wait a minute, hallelujah. Uh, 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 what if they had decided we're just going to give up and we ain't going to, look here, we ain't even going to deal with it no more? What if they had thrown up their arms in frustration and began to, uh, to bemoan within themselves, I'm tired of being the one who carries that load all the time? Uh, what if, amen, they said something like, well, let Andrew do it some of the some of the time. Let him go down there and change. Hallelujah. Let Nathaniel do some social leadership. Hallelujah. They ain't never doing nothing. Hallelujah. What if they had thoughts like that, glory to God, and decided they wasn't going to go see the Savior at the tomb? And whether or not they were tempted to go or to do these things, I'm glad that they didn't quit. I'm glad, amen, that they didn't quit because, I don't know about you, but I believe that would have been tragic. You see, we know something that they didn't know. We know, amen, that the Father was watching. They thought they were all alone. They thought, amen, that they was by themselves. There was no way we're going to be able to move the rock. Hallelujah. But what we know now, amen, that they were not alone. Hallelujah. They were not alone. Hallelujah. They thought their journey was unnoticed. They were wrong. God knew. He was watching them walk up the mountain. He was measuring every step that they took. He was smiling at their hearts and thrilled at their devotion. Hallelujah. And he had a surprise waiting on them. Glory to God. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Amen. But God been watching you. Amen. Hallelujah. As you put one foot in front of the other foot. God been watching you. Amen. As you're trying to live right. As you're trying to do the right thing. God's been watching you. Amen. And he's smiling at you tonight. Hallelujah. Because you think you all alone. You think you're going through this thing by yourself. But I hear God saying, Amen. You are wrong. I'm on your side tonight. Hallelujah. I see what you're going through. I see what what you're dealing with. And I got you, glory to God. I got something waiting on you. Come on, to put your hands together, glory to God. I want it, God. I want it, God. I want whatever you got for me tonight. Hallelujah. I get excited. Y'all got to forgive me. Hey, man, y'all know I got a lot of passion in my heart. Hey, man, I done been through some things in my life. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I get a little excited. Amen. When I hear that God got something waiting on me. Hallelujah. Here they thought that their journey was going unnoticed. And I know sometimes, saying to God, it seems like we're dealing with the weight of the world on our shoulders. It seems like sometimes, hey man, folk don't appreciate you. All the work you try to do, everything you're trying to do to help folk, help people live right, trying to help folk get through what they're dealing with. And it seemed like, hey, man, no good thing is coming your way. Hallelujah. But I hear God saying you're wrong. God knows what you need. 
Hallelujah. God knows, hallelujah, what he has. He said, I've got plan for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thoughts that are good and not of evil. I've got a plan for you. Amen. To make you prosperous. Glory to God. I've got a plan for you. Hallelujah. And if you keep on trusting me, if you keep on walking with me, if you keep on letting me lead God and protect you, I promise you, amen, the day's going to come. I'm going to bless your socks off. Hallelujah. And I'm going to get the glory because I'm going to be happy, glory to God, to do what I need to do in your life. Hallelujah. A surprise was waiting on them. And family of God, a surprise is waiting on you. Hallelujah. And why I did, you know, they said, well, somebody asked the question, well, why did the, why did the angel move the stone? Why, why, why did the angel move the stone when Jesus had been buried? Why did they come and move the stone? And uh, for whom did he roll the stone away for? Some people thought, you know, maybe he rolled it away for Jesus. That Jesus might be able to get out. Uh-huh. Uh, and then uh, other folk think, amen, they assumed that the angel moved the stone. Hallelujah. So that uh, 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 to keep the soldiers out. Or to keep the soldiers, uh, so the soldiers keep watch us. Uh, they, whatever they thought. Amen. Folk got all kind of reasons as to why they thought the stone was rolled away. Well, let me ask you a question. Did God need any help? No. <laughs> Glory to God. Was death conquered so weak that he couldn't push away the rock or the stone? Could somebody have moved this rock so that he couldn't get out? Absolutely not. I don't think so. But the text gives the impression that Jesus was already out. And when the stone was moved, Jesus was already gone, glory to God. Uh, nowhere in the Gospels does it say that the angel moved the stone for Jesus. Hallelujah. For whom then was the stone moved? Listen to what the angel said. Come and see the place where he lay. The stone was moved not for Jesus, but for the women. Amen. Not so Jesus could come out, but so the women could come in and see. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That he's not there. Glory to God. He's not there. Glory to God. Go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen. The dead. He has risen from the dead. And he's going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. And Mary, they said, hey, man, I guess they looked at each other and said, look here, you ain't got to tell me twice. Hallelujah. They ran, and they began to run to Jerusalem. The Bible says the darkness is gone. The sun is up, and the sun is out. But the sun isn't finished yet. Come on, Holy Ghost. Our surprise still awaits them. So the women turned, hurried from the tomb ran to tell the disciples and suddenly Jesus met them greetings he said they came to him clapped his feet and worshipped him and Jesus said to them do not be afraid go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee there they will see me and the God of surprise strikes again I love it because God look at he, look at, he never gives up he always want to surprise us with, the, with, with, with what's next in our life. And God, that's why, that's why, amen, that's why we got to keep pushing our way, hallelujah, toward the prize of the high calling. That's why we got to keep working hard at this thing, amen. That's why we can't get distracted by what's going on around us. We can't get caught up, hallelujah, in the fact, amen, that we blew it yesterday or we blew it this morning or we might blow it tonight, amen. We got to stay focused, hallelujah, because God still has a surprise for his people. God surprises. He had one more surprise for them. And he said, I can't wait any longer. They came this far to see me. I'm going to drop in on them. God does this faithful thing that he does. Just when the womb gets too old for babies, Sarah gets pregnant. Just when the failure is too great for grace, David is pardoned. 
Just when the road is too dark for Mary, the angel glows and the Savior shows up. And the two women will never be the same. I don't know about you, saying of God, but there's one thing I know about the presence of the Lord. When the presence of the Lord shows up in our life, amen, we will never be the same. Amen. This flesh might continue to act up. This flesh might continue, amen, to want to have its own way. But I got news for you, saying, when the, when the presence of the Lord shows up in our life, he shows up to show out. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God will show out. He'll show himself God. And here, the lesson. What's the lesson that God is wanting us to hear? That God is wanting us to take away. What are the takeaways tonight? The takeaway I want you to know, my friend, there's three words. Don't give up. Come on, Holy Ghost. Don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. Hallelujah. The enemy comes, hallelujah. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy because he wants us to give up. He wants us to throw in the towel. He wants us to, hallelujah, to shut it down. Just when God's about to bless you, the enemy wants you, hallelujah, to turn your back on your blessing. But I hear God saying tonight, don't give up. Glory to God. Is your trail dark? Don't sit down. Is your road too long? Don't stop walking. Don't stop running, glory to God. Don't stop, amen. Don't stop, amen. And consider your thoughts, amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't give up. Is your nights dark and gross dark? Hallelujah. I hear God saying, don't quit. He is a lamp unto your feet. He is a light unto your path. You can't find your way, hallelujah. Just put your hand out, amen, and keep walking north, glory to God. Don't quit. God is watching, and he's forever speaking. The question is, saint of God, are we listening? God is watching. He's forever speaking to us. The question is, saint of God, are you listening? For all you know, right at the moment, he may be telling the angel to move the stumbling block out your way. Right at the moment that you might be thinking about giving up, he may be telling somebody, amen, let them know that the check is in the mail. Glory to God. All you know, amen, hallelujah, right before you about ready to give up, God might be sending an angel to tell you, amen, the apology, hallelujah, may be in the making. Glory to God. The job contract may be on the desk. Glory to God. Don't quit. For if you do, you might miss your answer to the prayers you've been praying. Hallelujah. Somebody tell your neighbor, help. Hallelujah's on the way. I said, help is on the way. Help is on the way. Just when it looked like amen is over, I got news for you. Hallelujah. And if the lady ain't singing, glory to God, God's on his way. Help is on the way. God still sends angels. He still does miracles. He's still in the miraculous moving uh, hand of God. He's still doing wonderful things in the lives of his people. Don't quit. Don't give up. He still does the miraculous. And God will move stones, stumbling blocks, obstacles. Well, I look at whatever it is, glory to God. God is still able to move it out your way. Hallelujah. Ain't no mountain too high. Ain't no valley too low. Ain't no river too wide. Hallelujah. That God can't get to you. Come on, Holy Ghost. Somebody ought to put your hands together and bless the name of the Lord. God is too big. He's too large. He's too enormous. 
He's too gigantic, glory to God. Who can stop God from blessing you? Who can stop God from getting to you? Who, glory to God, has the power or the authority to think they can stop God from blessing you in your life? Don't quit. Hallelujah. The great commission, according to Matthew 28, 18 and 20, made a practical difference in your life. Perhaps a ministry with the Potter's House Church Outreach Program. Hallelujah. Has been a blessing to your life. I'm asking God tonight for wisdom as you call hallelujah and ask how you hallelujah can volunteer, how you can help, how you can join a body of believers. Amen. And telling folk and reminding folk, amen, don't give up. Don't quit. Notice, my friends, that each of these goals builds on the one preceding it. Christians, the body of believers, we are light reflecting God's glory to the world. We share brightly by being attentive to God's voice and following his will. And when someone takes an interest in the source of your light. Hallelujah. You ought to be prepared to share the good news of Christ and tell a sick and dying world that Jesus still saves. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And there is a blessing awaiting you. Hallelujah. Just hold on. Hallelujah. It's going to show up when you least expect it. Hallelujah. I dare somebody go ahead and just bless God right there. Amen. Hallelujah. There's a blessing awaiting you. Don't throw in the towel now. Amen. We just getting started. Glory to God. God has something great in store for your life. Family of God, we love you tonight. We thank God for you tonight. And we just pray, amen, that the word of encouragement has blessed you tonight. And that you know, amen, that you're not in this thing by yourself. God's got you. Amen. Hallelujah. And his strength. Hallelujah, is made strong in our weakness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Keep trusting the Lord. Keep your head up. Hallelujah. Keep looking for Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. One more time, put your hand together, and let's just thank the Lord tonight for the word of God tonight. Hallelujah. We love you, and we thank God for you. It's giving time. Those of you that want to give unto the Lord, we invite you to come now. Sow your seed of tithes and offering, seed of sacrifice, whatever the Lord is laying on your heart. Those that are watching online tonight, you can also sow, amen, or a cash out, T-P-H-D-I-M, the number two, T-P-H-D-I-M, the number two. Hallelujah. We thank God for you. We thank God for your support. Thank God, amen, for your prayers. And we thank God, amen, for your fellowshipping with us on this evening and every time we log on. Hallelujah, and you join us. God bless you, may God keep you. Hear what God is saying. God bless you. Those that are not saved, you want to be saved? Hallelujah, you can accept Christ right where you are tonight. Just call on his name, amen. Surrender, commit and surrender, amen. Ask God to come into your life, be Lord of your life. Hallelujah, he'll step in right, right on time. He'll step in, save you. Hallelujah. Change your heart. Restore your life. Set you on a new path. Amen. For the Bible says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. You will be a new creation in Christ Jesus. We love you and we thank God for you. Until we're able to meet again, go with God and go in peace.